What's the baby bio penguins? Today we do 2015 number four. This one's on mitosis and meiosis. So before we get too far, let's think for a second. Mitosis is our nuclear division. It's dividing our nucleus so we can make new somatic cells, more body cells. Versus meiosis is going to be a nuclear division so that we can make reproductive cells, sperm or egg. Um, and so we have to be thinking about what takes place in these processes versus what's taking place before and after it. So it tells you both of these are forms of cell division. They produce daughter cells that contain genetic information from the parent cell. A asks us to describe two events that are common to both mitosis and meiosis that ensure the resulting cell inherit the appropriate number of chromosomes. So when we think about the cell cycle, there's a lot of things that take place. Um, and so we have prophase where the cell is preparing to divide. We have our um, sister chromatids finding one another. We've got our chromatin condensing. We have homologous chromosomes finding one another if we're talking about meiosis. In metaphase, we have our sister chromatids aligning on the metaphase plate or meiosis. We're talking about homologous chromosomes aligning on the metaphase plate. In anaphase, sister chromatids or homologous pairs, whichever one we're talking about, is going to move up kind of segregate to the opposite poles, separate um, so that they will, of course, give us equal numbers. And then telophase, we see that we, now we have our two new nuclei. And so we have to think about like in the cell cycle, what else takes place? Well, you've got various checkpoints. The M checkpoint is ensuring that our um, chromosomes are going to move to opposite poles equally and make sure that all the kinetic core microtubules are attached to the kinetic cores on the centromere of our chromosomes or our uh, chromatids, whichever one we're looking at, um, to ensure that they move appropriately. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that takes place that we need to make sure that we are taking to advantage. Now, you only have to describe two. The first two things you say are what is going to be recorded and what's going to be read. Now, we, of course, read all of them, but you can only score the first two responses. So the things you could have put, and there was a big list of things you could have put. You could talk about spindle elements, talking about the microtubules attaching um, to those chromosomes. And due to the attachment, we can equally divide our chromosomes. You talk about the chromatin condensing. Chromatin is your DNA and your protein, and it's kind of unraveled. And so it's going to condense. The um, uh, DNA is going to wrap around those um, histones, which are your proteins, um, and it's going to condense it down, and that's what makes the chromosomes. You talk about the alignment of the chromosomes across the center of the cell. That would be metaphase. Um, and so we're going to see cystic chromatids or homologous chromosomes aligning on the metaphase plate so we can then get equal division. Separation talks about anaphase. So we're separating the chromatids or separating our chromosomes to opposite poles. The checkpoints, G1, G2 G2 checkpoint is going to take place at the end of interphase. And this is ensuring that I've replicated my DNA. There's no huge errors in my DNA and it's ready to divide. The M checkpoint is ensuring that the kinetic core microtubules are attached to the, the chromosomes um, so that we can equally divide them. Um, and then there's, of course, replication or synthesis of the DNA. You have to make sure that you have replication of that DNA, but it has to take place during interphase, which is before mitosis and meiosis. You also could talk about cytokinesis, which takes place after mitosis. And in case you don't remember, cytokinesis is the vision of the cytoplasm. So the student says separation of sister chromatids in both mitosis and meiosis ensures that each daughter cell receives appropriate number of chromosomes. Also, lining up with the chromosomes along the middle of the cell ensures the chromosomes of uh, will separate properly. So there is the two answers and it's really quick and to the point. So B says genetic composition of daughter cells produced by mitosis differs from the daughter cells produced by meiosis. Describe two features of cell division processes that lead to these differences. Again, they're only asking for two. If you give three and four, your reader is going to read them, but you can't get credit past the two. So I always tell students that they need to really spell out the first difference the second difference. So the reader knows exactly which are your two that you're trying to get them to look at. So the student, oh, I'm sorry, we haven't said the student, sorry. <clears throat> the answers we could look here are that there's a ton of them, right? So either talking about that there's one division or two divisions. Mitosis goes through one division and due to that one division, there's two daughter cells produced. Meiosis goes through two divisions. Because of those two divisions, you result in four different cells. Because of the fact that we go through one division, those cells are going to be diploid, and they're identical to that parent cell. Versus the meiosis, it's half of the genetic material as the parent cell, and they're going to be haploid. They are genetically distinct due to crossing over and independent assortment. You can talk about chromatids separating. Chromatids will separate. Sister chromatids separate in my, uh, mitosis, um, but they only take place in meiosis two because in meiosis one, that's homologous chromosomes. Crossing over does not occur in mitosis. Technically, it does. But they're identical. So if you cross over identical information, it doesn't really result in anything different. So they say that crossing over doesn't exist. 
Um, versus meiosis is going to occur. Um, and that's how we get recombinant chromosomes, chromosomes from both your mother and your father on the same chromosome. And then homologous chromosomes separating independently of sorting does not occur in mitosis because they are identical. For semiosis, it does occur because homologous chromosomes can align on either side. Okay. Now, as of the fact that this is talking us to come up with differences, in your statement, you must say both mitosis and meiosis. You cannot just assume that by me saying, oh, meiosis has crossing over. You can't assume that that means it does not occur in mitosis. So you need to barely say both of them, okay? So a student says, unlike mitosis, meiosis results in four haploid cells rather than two diploid cells because cell division occurs twice as to produce gametes. So that right there, that one sentence got them two points. They said both the fact that we had four cells versus two cells. They also talked about that there was haploid versus diploid. That one sentence got them two points. Their second sentence, although the chromosomes in the cells have undergone meiosis, are recombinants of each other, um, unlike those of mitosis, because synapsing that occurs in prophase one. Synapsing, yeah, that's crossing over, and they probably could have gotten points for that, but they already have their two points here by saying haploid and diploid. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Biopenguins address success. Bye, y'all.